Hey everybody, this is the Right Geek here with your weekly video. Today I'm going to do a video that is inspired by some other chatter on YouTube and some chatter on Twitter, uh, and the topic is going to be titties, uh, and in particular, why I, as a female reader, am not bothered at all by comic titties. Um, now this is the sort of thing that if anyone... Uh, met me or looked at me, they might find that kind of surprising uh, because I am uh, I am disabled. Uh, my spine and my legs and my hands and all that are are not perfectly formed. And to be quite frank, I am not a conventionally beautiful woman. Uh, some people find me pretty in sort of a, a girl next door sort of way, but Let's face it, I'm not skinny. Uh, I'm kind of fluffy <laughs> uh, in the uh, sort of stomach and, uh, and thighs and uh, rear end apartment. And, uh, and I'm not especially feminine either. I don't wear makeup. Um, I, don't, I do wear dresses sometimes, but um, I don't do so often. Um, I don't spend a lot of time in my hair. I actually have my hair cut short. So I can basically shower and go. And uh, as some people have noticed, I have a uh, uh, somewhat on the manly side radio voice. And by the way, number one Marmaduke fan, I'm still waiting for you to review those girly unicorn comics in response. Um, I can't wait to see that when you do it. Um, I know you've got that uh, free Halloween comic backlog that you need to get through, but uh, eventually... I want to see those girly unicorns, man. But moving on. So, uh, just to sum up, I am not a conventionally uh, attractive woman. And yet, I am not bothered at all by comic titties. I am not bothered by um, women being drawn in an attractive, busty way in comics. And there are three basic reasons why um, this doesn't bother me at all, even though I am a woman. Um, and I think the first big reason is that in the comics that I have read, I have not really seen any evidence that drawing women as beautiful and busty and perfectly proportioned, uh, precludes actually writing female characters that have personalities and have struggles and, uh, and have their competencies. Um, so I'm thinking, for example, because I've been reading it lately, um, uh, in Kurt Busiek's Avengers, the volume three Avengers, uh, we have Carol Danvers, um, who is written in that era as, uh, a woman who is going through the, uh, the consequences of trauma and, uh, and she develops an alcohol problem because of that and has to work her way through that. And, uh, I just finished, uh, reading through the big Kang storyline that happened, uh, in, in that volume as well. And at the end of that volume, she actually presents herself to the Avengers and said, look, I killed the master. That's not something that the Avengers do. I should be court-martialed for that. Um, and they end up going easy on her because they said, look, it was a wartime situation. Um, you know, the, uh, the situation was extraordinary. Um, but all the same, uh, she was this honorable person who said, uh, you know, we have rules. We have rules of conduct. We have ways that we conduct ourselves. And I, uh, at least superficially, violated those rules. And now I must call myself to account. Uh, which is, if any of you are familiar with how Carol Danvers is being written in current year, um, that's, that's very uh, shocking and almost, um, what's the word I want to say? Well, it's disappointing that nowadays uh, we've kind of lost that aspect of the character. Um, and we also have uh, uh, She-Hulk, who is also drawn as a very beautiful, very busty woman. Um, and I'm not an expert on She-Hulk, but from what I have gathered in the comics that I read, she's also a competent lawyer. 
So the fact that a character uh, is drawn in a busty and beautiful way does not in any way um, preclude her being an actual character with actual competency and actual intelligence. Uh, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, particularly feminists out there who have this prejudice that if someone is pretty, if someone is beautiful in the conventional way, that must mean they can't be intelligent or capable uh, in other ways. And, and that's just not true. There are many beautiful and also smart and also competent women out there. Um, so it, it's showing a little bit of bigotry against pretty women to say that women who are beautiful in comics, well, you're just downplaying their intelligence. That's, and that's just not what I see in the comics that I've read. So uh, just based on my experience of reading comics, beautiful and smart and competent and able, they can exist together. And drawing women as beautiful does not mean you can't have those other qualities. Um, the second reason I think why I don't really have a problem with women being drawn in incredibly busty ways in comics is that, um, well, my mind just does not operate in the way where a character has to look like me in every particular in order for me to, to relate to them. Um, that's, that, that's simply not how I think as an individual woman. <laughs> I mean, look, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I am a huge fan of Iron Man. Iron Man looks nothing like me. He is, in fact, the complete opposite gender. <laughs> Uh, and he's dashing and handsome and, um, and, and rich, and I'm not rich. Oh, by the way, I, I make basically the median income for the United States. I am not wealthy in any way. Um, so there is basically zero similarity. Uh, well, not zero, but there's no similarity very little similarity between me and this character. And yet I managed to connect him. Why? Not because of the superficial aspects of the character, but because of a similarity in experience. Basically, I uh, grew to love Iron Man reading the early issues of Tales of Suspense, which I've been going through in some of my previous videos, um, because I recognized uh, an experiential similarity. And that was that um, Tony with the chest plate that has to be charged on a regular basis uh, in order for it to work, in order for it to keep his heart beating. Um, what that means for him in uh, the superhero scenario is he has to sometimes bow out of the fight in order to in order to recharge because otherwise basically he'll drop dead or he'll lose consciousness um and as someone who is chronically ill and someone who is disabled that is an experience that i also have that there are times when i'm in the middle of an activity where my energy runs out. My, uh, as many chronically ill people dealing with chronic pain will say, you know, the spoons just aren't there to do certain things. So you have to bow out and you have to recharge. Um, so that experiential similarity is, is what allowed me to link into this character who is otherwise not like me in any way. Like, not even in worldview, really. I mean, Tony is written as uh, very scientific and very, um, uh, uh, later on, more of an explicit atheist. And I happen to be a Christian uh, in an Orthodox sect. Um, I happen to be a Catholic Christian. So, um, so even in worldview, he is different from me. And yet there are these experiential things that we share, and that's what allows me to connect to that character. And I think that um, philosophically, I really have a problem with this idea 
that the only way we can connect to a character is if they are exactly like me on a superficial level. I think encouraging people to think that way actually causes empathy in our society to decline. I think we need to start thinking about characters in terms of their experiences and their emotions and not what they look like on the outside. Um, I also have a philosophical problem with um, uh, <clears throat> this whole idea that <clears throat> um, p uh, that women who are drawn in a very beautiful and busty way um, are 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 bad because they're not honoring all body types. Um, you know, on one level, there is some accuracy in that claim in that I think that we should at least be showing women of many different ethnicities who are beautiful um, in our art and, uh, and, you know, emphasize the idea that you can be, uh, you know, you can be Chinese, you can be Japanese, you can be African and still be beautiful in some way. That, that I'm cool with, uh, showing beauty in all of its many colors and ethnicities. But the truth of the matter is that not every body type is going to be celebrated and not every body type needs to be celebrated. As a disabled woman, woman what I expect from the rest of society is just basic decency. I don't want to be treated like I am uh, an outsider who should be made fun of. But I don't expect and do not feel that I am entitled to celebration just because I happen to be disabled. I think it's okay that media celebrates bodies that are more beautiful than mine. Because I, as long as I am being treated with decency and respect and, uh, and that people are accommodating my need, uh, the fact that I am not being celebrated as conventionally beautiful does not bother me at all. And I don't think I'm entitled to that. Really, if your particular body type is not being celebrated as beautiful because you are heavier or because you are disabled. <coughs> um, what, you, what you can demand and what you should demand is that you be treated with respect and that you be treated with decency and that you not be made fun of. But I think it is a losing game to demand that society completely ignore natural uh, beauty standards just to make you feel affirmed. I think where you need to find affirmation is not in superficial uh, ideas of what is beautiful, but you need to find your root of self-esteem in something else. I, for example, have decided to root my self-esteem in my intelligence and in my brain power. Um, I have worked on becoming educated and thoughtful, and I think that's what I have to offer the world, not the fact that I am beautiful. And I think that we all need to find affirmations uh, that are based on our internal character and our internal um, competencies and what we can do as people and not on what we look like. <clears throat> so I like we can honor people who are not conventionally beautiful in other ways than demand that everyone say everyone is beautiful no matter what let's affirm all body types and uh and if we have media that shows women in conventional uh that according to conventional beauty standards that that's somehow bad and wrong and it's telling people like me that uh that we're not valuable and we're not worthy 
uh, once again, I think it is a losing battle to uh, try to force society to change what their natural evolutionary uh, standards of beauty are just to make yourself feel better. I think we need to work on ourselves and our um, uh, and and what we can provide to the world besides what we look like. Um, so that's sort of my reflection on uh, on busty women in comics. Um, I'd be interested to know what everyone else thinks. Uh, I appreciate you listening, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.